sa susunod na mag-e-emote ka at magkakalat, huwag sa feed ko. Tapang-tapang mong mag-post pero isang comment lang pikun ka na. Yabang-yabang pero wala ka rin pala talaga. <sighs> Makahusga ka? Hindi mo ako kilala? Teka ha, huwag kayong mag-aaway. Hindi, Hindi kami nag-aaway. Congratulations, JC, on the release of uh, Dito at Doon, or there, Here and There. Uh, tell us uh, how excited you are for the, for the online streaming release of the film. I have a lot of friends who wanted to watch the movie outside the country, so I, I can't wait for them to see it. Uh, I can't wait for them to feel how it is here in the Philippines. So for them to, to to know how it is, what's happening at, in 2020, what what's, what was here in the Philippines at that time? Just a little bit of background. Tell us how how did you how did you and your family deal with the pandemic, and how are you handling it now? Uh, back 2020, I have a newborn baby, and I was still living in in Ortigas in Manila. So that time, I didn't actually feel the whole uh, like almost six months of it because I was uh, taking care of my newborn baby. Uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was so much fun at that time. I was so busy. I didn't even know how, what was happening almost outside. And, but aside from the fact that I have to go to the grocery store, uh, that it was almost closed and um, only like a few, uh, 50 people are allowed inside. And yeah, I, I, it was a good thing and a bad thing for me because, uh, well, I was enjoy while having while having fun with my newborn baby. I was not having the work that I was expecting. I, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty hard for us uh, actors at that time. And then a few um, uh, months later, the a network closed. It was ABS-CBN, so we were all in trouble. Like, well, what's going to happen to us? And yeah, and thank God uh, I got this project and uh, it was pretty good and the script is amazing and I'm going to have good directors with TBA and my co-actor Janine. It's, it's, it was a blessing. So tell us a little bit more. I mean, uh, to have this fall into your lap, tell us how did that happen and how did, how did you get involved with this project? Oh, it was, I think, I remember the email was in July. Um, they sent me a script and yeah, it was a, the first third, I think it was a third draft of the script. And I saw it at that time, it was a really long <laughs> script. And I'm like, okay, this is really good. Uh, this is too, uh, <clears throat> and it's, uh, the setting was pandemic. So I wanted to do something about, uh, pand I wanted to do a pandemic movie. So it was a perfect timing for everything. Um, and that time it was just direct JP who was involved in the movie and then TBA. And I, when I saw it, it was TBA and direct JP and it was a good script. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> and, and did you already know that uh, Janine was, uh, was uh, attached? No. Or, no. or you know who was going to be your, your uh, opposite uh, lead <laughs> or whatnot? I, I was asking at that time who was going to be the, the, the leading role, like who was going to be Len in the movie. And I, I, I remember they didn't reply yet. So I found out about Janine a few months later. <laughs> wow. And it, it made it super exciting, too, because I haven't worked with Janine yet. Have you ever had have you ever um, uh, seen her around like in, 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 in parties or, or just in uh, just uh, social events or whatnot? Okay, um, we had a series together uh, before, but I, we had a movie actually, but we never met. It was The, uh, the Gun and the Girl. Uh, it was an indie. And then the second time we were in a series together, but it was just like maybe two days. I didn't, we, we didn't get to know each other. I've never met her in parties. I've, I've actually, it was the first time that we get to know each other that in, in, in this movie. <laughs> yeah. uh -oh, uh -oh. But, uh, did you guys have any time to to rehearse and to to connect with each other and do research or whatnot or i know you were just straight straight directly into production see what's a good thing about this we're in a lock-in right lock in shoot where it's it's like uh, almost 18 to 20 days that we're in, in in on location so at that time if you if you see the movie there's a scene there's just a in a one scene that he's she's at home and I'm at home 
So it's a video call, right? But, but she has to be there, right? Like right there in, in person in front of me. So we get to rehearse a whole thing. We get to repeat the whole thing. And, you know, you get to the heart of the scene where you, it, it gets deeper. The conversation gets deeper every time. So that's the whole rehearsal process. It's actually while shooting the film. And uh, Direct JP gave us the whole freedom to do everything that we wanted to do. And yeah, the whole research of it, um, I think it was pretty good that it, the pandemic was happening while we were actually shooting a movie. So how it feels to be in that and phenomenon in this uh, global crisis, it, it helped in the movie that we're actually worried and we have to take care of each other. And yeah, it, 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 it was hard and good at the same time, creatively because creative because we get to focus in just one thing, which is just the script and in our jobs to, to act and to, to get to know each other at that time. We were looking at how the Philippine cinema and just the Philippine streaming, how it's become, you know, uh, I guess you could say international, especially with some of those BL stories that have been <laughs> yeah. online, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the one thing that I guess the difference between your film and those BL series is that most of the shots were done uh, at, you know, through Zoom or through, through connecting yeah. with each other. However, the difference for your, your film is that you guys actually got to film together. Um, how exciting yeah. was that just to actually get to the point where like you guys are actually filming in person with each other? <laughs> it was weird the first time. Uh, uh, the first time we heard it, I, I, it was an on Zoom meeting. It was uh, it were, he, uh, Direct JP was discussing about the film and I like, oh, this, this is how it's going to be. So you're going to be seeing each other in, in your room and in her room. So, oh, wait, so we're going to be repeating the scene all over and keep repeating more, more than 20 times or 30. So, <laughs> so, okay, so this is super hard. And then we started doing it. And then when we started doing it, we were like, oh, this is weird. This is um, uh, this is so unusual. We, we've, we, we have to make it feel like it's a video call or it's a call, it's a phone call, but we're in front of each other. So the acting, the, the acting challenge there was that <laughs> we have to make it feel like uh, we're talking but not connected. So yeah, <laughs> it was, we, we, uh, as Jenny would say, it's just, aliw, nakaka-aliw naman to, what's happening? Because it's unusual, eh, diba? Parang, how how are we gonna pull this out? We didn't we didn't believe it at first. Like what's gonna happen? And then when, while we see the the previews and everything, oh, it actually is working. <laughs> yeah. So were there points where direct had to like stop you guys because you guys were at that point where like, uh oh, they're getting too close together or they're about to like <laughs> hug or whatever. Oh no, you know you know how like you're you're used to interacting with each other and then you know as yeah. an actor you're trying to say, oh, I got to keep in my mind that. We're not actually in the room with each other. Yeah, that's the one challenge too. Because uh, if you're uh, talking with somebody, you can, uh, of course, if you're getting close, like in the script, right? Like we're getting closer and closer, but we can't touch each other. We, we don't know. We, we can't. Yeah, there's a lot of restrictions. Well, you have to make the film. So, yeah, <laughs> we get in trouble a few times. <laughs> Uh, but uh, most of the time, we, we get the hang of it. It, it, it. Maybe after two or three times repeating the whole scene, like different shots, you get the, you get the hang of it. You, you, you get used to it right away. But it's, it, it still feels weird every time. But when, when you watch it, it, doesn't, it feels like it's easy. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Now, I'm, without any spoilers, how hard was it then to do the emo the very emotional scenes in the in the film then oh it's hmm because at that time uh the first one we shot was janine's location and then it was it was the second time was mine my location right so we were shooting in tagaytay and then suddenly we're shooting in batangas we have to move from one place to another and then so by that time in, in my scene, uh, I, I already memorized almost 80% uh, of the script. So I, I got, I, what, I dived deep into it. So it, 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 felt, um, it felt real in me, in, in, inside my head. And uh, yeah, so it became a little easy uh, at that time because I, I'm in character already. I'm, I'm, I was not letting go the whole shoot. <laughs> it's probably just my process but 
uh, it, yeah, and yeah, it, it felt a little, yeah, easy at that time because uh, I'm really, I got uh, maybe uh, uh, internalized it so much. Mm, yeah, so I, it felt really good was shooting that scene. <laughs> so would you say that all of your hard work in college and theater arts uh, graduate, did that really help help you with realizing that we're going to go through this and this is the way we're going to shoot and all that did were there yeah you were able to pull from your from your from learning from from acting class and and and, and college yeah <laughs> it yeah i i think so it helped a lot like the whole 12 years of doing theater maybe rehearsals and the blockings and how you the discipline um yeah it, it made it easy for me to 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 just adjust to adapt to these this kind of process what we did in Dito at Dawn and here and there. So yeah, it it, it made it easy for me a little bit. So I think uh, because I've never this is just my fifth year doing the for the screen and I'm still learning the whole time. I, I'm still learning how to deal with the camera. I'm still learning how to deal with a co-actor dealing with the camera while dealing with the blocking and everything because it's different from the theater. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm still. Um, about messing up a lot of times, but the discipline of uh, repeating the, the repetitiveness and the, the the whole blocking and uh, yeah, it it made me yeah it made it made it easy for me to to execute a lot of scenes in this movie and uh, to, to to keep the conversation um, in a good rhythm so that the audience would uh, still be hooked while watching, even though it's just like, like a normal conversation. So the yeah the theater helped a lot in this uh, in this context of uh, the script of Dito at Dawn. Talk to us a little bit more about your character and and what's something that really drew you to the character that you really loved and that you wanted to emote into or create create your own style of that character while acting. I started um, my research with that. Well, the first the first time I I saw the character, it was he's he's from the province, right? He's from Cebu. So at that point, I started with that. I, that's my baseline because I'm from I'm I'm from Pampanga. I live in the province too. That's my hometown. And then I went to Manila to study theater and uh, maybe, and work eventually. So I know how it feels to be out of your hometown, out of your comfort zone. So and then I went I, I went to be an OFW after a few years. So I know how it feels to be out of your country, out of your yeah. That that's that whole part. So I started with that. That's my baseline. Of, of his hugot, uh, of his uh, bubog, what we call it here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so with the conversation part of the, uh, uh, of the what do you mean? Um, the conversation about with the chemistry with Janine, I really have to work hard for that. So that was a pretty interesting uh, phase because it's the two different processes of acting with just adapting into one script. So it, it's, <laughs> it's interesting because it, it, it felt like it's, we were doing, we're dealing with the same language, which is acting, but it's a different process. It's a different uh, style. So when I was doing it, um, the, whole, the only challenge was the Cebuano part because I'm not from Cebu. I had to study the language. I had to study the song. It was a, there was this one scene that I have to sing in, in full-on Bisaya, and uh, yeah, that was <laughs> that was a, that was a different one. That was that was tough, and one scene I had to talk in uh, in a normal way Bisaya, and then I have to ask uh, uh, because we have one staff there. I have to ask her. I have to ask him how, how what does it mean? Like what every every context and uh, nuances of this uh, language and dialect. So yeah, that's it's pretty crazy. It's it, but it's it's amazing experience. So so it was a point where like you're trying to be as authentic as possible with the with yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> I have to keep listening to him. I have, I have to record him and then yeah. So and then I, I keep asking whenever I deliver it. I, I go to him like, did I say it right? Did I say it right? So I keep bugging the guy. So yeah, <laughs> that's me. I'm a nerd that way. <laughs> What has been the learning experience for you on this film? I guess it's I, be, I became really sensitive about everything. I became really sensitive of the, the feelings of people. Like they don't you don't know what the, what they're dealing with with this pandemic with that at that time. 
you don't know what they're dealing with right now. So I have to be really careful with them every time. So shooting the movie, we were all uh, so nice to each other. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, um, what else uh, what have I learned? Um, I guess uh, maybe we could, it's, it's, it's adapting still to, to the environment and to the script and to everybody. So it made it, it made me appreciate uh, a lot of um, uh, what uh, it made me appreciate all of their jobs actually. Like wow, it's it's crazy how they do things behind the camera because I've been acting maybe almost fifteen years. So yeah, it, maybe that's it. It's more appreciation of the people's designation in this uh, crew in this uh, ship. Yeah. Do Do you feel like? It's the appreciation also being an IRL or in real life, you know, especially being on lockdown. I know that you mentioned that it, it you didn't really feel it that much, but but just to realize that you guys were actually able to to shoot together and to and to actually uh, um, connect with each other in that mm -hmm. way versus uh, how some of these um, some of these uh, shows are doing right now where they do it through through uh, Zoom calls or through, uh, through mm. FaceTime or whatnot. Do you feel that that you've gotten uh, a new, um, uh, what did that word, respect for, for being, to connect with people in, 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 real, in real life? Yeah, of course. Because um, in that long year of not having to connect with people, so <laughs> it made it uh, super exciting for me to deal with uh, to, to do to do it again actually it's just to have to work again to have to work again so yeah uh, it, um, I remember with this uh, discussion we had like uh, with the with the character of Len and the uh, Kaloi um, with their different status are they still going to be connected even though if they're not you know in that status if, if it's not the pandemic so it's 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 really hard to to, to have someone so actually just talking to someone in front of you is it's yeah wow it's this is a deep question I, <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard, another hard way of connection it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of a uh, discussion <laughs> I, I, I feel like I'm writing right now <laughs> well maybe you can write you can write your own uh, uh, movie about your experience <laughs> Have you ever thought about getting to filmmaking or, or script writing or whatnot? Or, or is that uh, thing? I'm probably going to be teaching first, maybe. I'm going to be teaching acting maybe for now because uh, it's really hard. We can have like a few students in front of me right now, but not. Yeah, I, I hate it online. I, I don't like the whole process. Like, right, I want to talk to you in person. Like, I want to talk about a lot of things, but I feel like we're stuck in one box. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but eventually I'll write or maybe direct. Yeah. Right. Tell me about um, connecting internationally with this film. Are you like, wow, this is actually going international instead of like local Philippines and then and then stream online stream online later. But you're you're mm -hmm. already getting getting people, friends and, and, and so forth asking about it. And I feel like um, just watching the film, it has it has a universal story to it, especially for the pandemic. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts about that. Um, I, I can't wait for, for almost everybody to see it, uh, especially the, the Filipinos abroad or maybe a lot of people globally, uh, because this is our, maybe, this is our love letter for 2020. This is, uh, I can't wait for the people like after five years, they're gonna talk about Oh, this is what happened in the Philippines at that time. And this is what's happening. I can't wait for everybody to relate in that uh, moment where we, we, we tackled a lot of stuff in this film, especially with, uh, with the whole, uh, with the frontliners, uh, the, the being at home, getting anxieties. You don't know what's going to happen to your parents. You don't know what's going to happen to your friends. You, you, you drink it online and you, you copy, do a lot of things that, that, that they want to do. They want, want, they want to make you do in the internet, like the Dalgona coffee. <laughs> yeah. So I can, um, yeah, it, it, I think it, this, this is reaching a lot of, uh, uh, it's just going to make good memories for people. And this is, um, 
yeah, it's good. I ho I hope that they enjoy the film. I I, <laughs> I can't wait because it's getting a lot of good reviews here in the Philippines, and I don't know what would they think if if it's like outside the country. So, yeah, our love letter for 2020. Yeah, it's it's exciting that it's being shown abroad, and yeah, it's it's what uh, it's surreal. It's it's different. <laughs> I'm excited for them to see it. Okay, so this film is about love and family and relationship. I'm going to give you a yeah. hardball question. Um, what's more important? What's what's the most important thing, family or love? Family or love? Well, it could you could do both, but yeah, family's for the right for me. Yeah, family's the most important. I I mean, I me as a person, I I grew up with with two of OFW parents, so. I didn't have parents for almost like 17 years of my life. So now I'm building one. So it's good. It, it's amazing. It, 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 now I, I know the importance of having, uh, of building a family, of, of being a father and uh, being a parent. Well, the, you know, just, just talking about that, you know, right now people dealing with the pandemic and being online or whatnot, for you as having OFW parents, did you, were you able to stay connected with them through through social media or through Facebook or through through FaceTime or whatnot, you yeah. know, because you know back back in the seventies and and so forth, a lot of OFDU kids from OFDU parents really didn't know their parents. Um, was yeah. that something different for you um, that you were able to connect with, still connect and know your parents? Well, well, that's what social media is being amazing right now because of that uh, i get to reach out to my parents my my mother is in las vegas right now and my father is a seafarer he's a seaman for an oil tanker ship that goes saudi and uh, different countries to deliver oil um so uh, thank god for social media thank god for vipers and whatsapp and everything that i could i could always ask them how are they and how are they feeling if, if they're having anxiety and being stuck at home or being on lockdown and especially my dad's used to it because he's always three months on board. So he, he's fine. So I, I'm not worried about my father. I'm worried about him when he was about to come back. And uh, yeah, because he has to stay in a hotel in the middle of a pandemic and it's for 14 days. So I'm worried about him. He's just 50 years old. My, my, they're, they're young. And yeah, being, having OFW parents, uh, it's <laughs> at this time, uh, it, um, what? it made me feel closer to them too even though i didn't you know i didn't see them most of the time so being online with them it's it's actually pretty good yeah. wow that's great to hear um for you um with this film um what would you say you want the the public the audience to get out of the film what what is what kind of message do you hope is conveyed to people um, um, especially when we have to be really careful who we deal, I think, with the people online, because uh, you don't know what's their background yet. You don't know how they feel in, in the moment. So we have to take care of each other. You just have to be nice, actually, <laughs> because you don't know, the, you can't judge a, a person right away. So, and uh, what, what, you know, what yeah about what i said like what he's dealing with in the moment but so you have to to be kind to one another i think and uh, we wanted to with this film we wanted to ignite a discussion about how else we could help each other because everybody's this is a universal feeling that happened uh this this feeling of having a global crisis so we wanted to get to the leaders. <laughs> we wanted to ignite discussions for this. Um, we wanted to know, uh, we wanted to get to know all the people who, who could be involved in helping, uh, especially uh, with a lot of countries having hard time right now. So yeah, uh, it, I hope we could reach those people. <laughs> what have you learned with, with, with just being together, being, being on set together? um and so forth is th has that connected you even more and more more respect for for the craft of others and just being being together and, and uh, along with the director and everybody else that's on yeah. that's on set well especially now yeah <laughs> well, because uh, we, we did we were actually super grateful that we actually just have work right. at that time and um yeah that was 
with the, with the whole experience of uh, uh, while doing this in the pandemic, uh, we 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 were always what we we were we were seizing the moment every time we, we we didn't we were we were so close on set because we we won't know if we we're gonna see each other again. It was uh we were we, we had a time of our lives, <laughs> and uh, yeah we, we were just seizing the day every day and. Yeah, maybe with the whole appreciation, that I'm actually it changed me as a father too, as a new father. Actually, with the with this whole thing, with having a newborn, it even my acting changed, even even my idea of love, even how how it made it um what it, the 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 meaning of love made it deep for me, having being a father right now and. Um, it made me feel like I wanted to take care of everybody, like how I take care of my daughter. So it, it's, it's different. It's uh, yeah. That changed, that, that changed my life as an artist too. So aside from the fact that I'm dealing with a lot of actors who, who might be, who, might, who I won't be seeing a few months after, because we don't know what's going to happen. So yeah, it's, I'm just feeling grateful for everything. Do you think that having a daughter now will that also change your trajectory of of the type of roles that you d decide to take in the future or or whatnot? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried because uh, in this industry right now where I am in, I'm I I'm always in the support side. I I usually get the leads uh, sometimes. Uh, it's not always that I yeah. So I'm not worried, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, I, I, I mean, I, I just got two projects after doing Dito at Dawn and it's two different roles uh, because here I'm considered as a character actor, not like a leading man material. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> not a leading man, well, you're a leading man in this film. Um, what, what 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 projects do you have upcoming um, after the after this film? Uh, we have uh, I'm gonna be acting with Sue Ramirez. Uh, if, 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 if we actually finished it. it. It was another lock in movie, but it's not set in the pandemic, so we did that. <laughs> so um, uh, I have another. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, though, the things that we finished filming, they're, they're all streaming right now. We, with with one international film called Motel Akasha in I1 TFC and then another one with the same director we did a, from Signal Play. And now with uh, Sue Ramirez, it's called Boyfriend Number 13. So it's going to be an iFlix. So yeah, projects, uh, roles. Um, um, yeah, maybe, maybe it's going to change eventually how they look at me now. <laughs> I'm trying to lose weight every time so that I get good roles. <laughs> It's it's hard in this pandemic to lose weight. <laughs> so really being a dad too. <laughs> what do you want to say to all the Pinoys? Just just people in general. What what message would you want to say to them about about um, dealing with the pandemic and and looking at the positivity of life? Or you have any messages you want to mm. relate to anybody to to everybody out there? Uh, I keep I keep telling my friends every time like um, you know oh, what we're dealing right now. It's 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 not it's not forever. It's not going to happen forever. It's, it's just temporary, you know, uh, how are they? Cause some right now who are having anxiety attacks and panic attacks and yeah. And I have to keep uh, messaging them. You have to, you have to keep uh, communicating with people. You have to be with your loved one every time. And uh, yeah. Um, I always tell people like, it's not, a, it's not a bad life. It's just going to be a bad day. So should happen and I'm um, keep telling them to write uh, write stories write um, write everything that you feel like right be a storyteller uh, every time like maybe whatever you have to do you have to video cam yourself you have to write down you have to type so I, I keep telling them to keep telling stories uh, keep collecting collecting memories and moments um, and uh, tell people about your fears, your pains and uh, everything that it should, that it's okay to just not be okay. And uh, yeah, it's fine. Just so just keep telling stories. I think. Yeah. You definitely got the story told. Um, lastly, I just wanted to ask, you know, 
your your mom you say your mom's in las vegas yeah um you know you see um just it's it's been a whole focus here in the in the u.s uh, asian hate were you have you been worried about about the safety of your mom or just just seeing all the news here in, in the u.s or or yeah a little bit i i actually asked her to come home <laughs> like come on i'll take care of you here you don't have to work there like yeah i, I was a little worried and my my mom too she has this mindset that she doesn't want to get vaccinated well that's a, that's weird to, for me like no mom <laughs> we were fighting so now she's vaccinated so she's fine because uh like well because one of my fa my father-in-law got sick here with the COVID, and now i have to tell her see mom it's real <laughs> <laughs> yeah What's so i wanted her to go home i'm actually planning after she gets vaccinated i want to go home okay so so was that was that one thing that that really got her from from not wanting to vaccinate was just seeing that other people that got sick from it or whatever or or was she an anti-vaxxer <laughs> <laughs> she has this conspiracy theory inside her head for some reason <laughs> uh, so yeah yeah it, it, she got scared actually the the because she might uh it's, that you can actually die in this uh virus and yeah well yeah so i keep convincing her at that time so yeah <laughs> i don't know who who else she's she, she talking to in in, in las vegas <laughs> why did she have that mindset the mom <laughs> too do i need to do i need to monitor your facebook <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i keep telling her to go back come back here just take care of your uh granddaughter yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So, anyways, um. I know. Let's let's go ahead and wrap it up. I know you you're you're a busy guy. Um. <laughs> especially okay. busy with your with your daughter. Real quick, just on a personal level, tell us how how excited has it been being a father now, and and what is one of those biggest moments that you love when you're with your wife and your daughter. Um. Has there been any moments where you see her cooing or or making funny noises or oh. or any moments where like you're like Oh my God! Now, now I realize why, why yeah. people say, "Oh, it's great to have a child." <laughs> a few, a few years back then, I, I've always um, because I've, 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 I've lived for 15 years without parents, right? So now it made a whole, um, a whole appreciation for my parents that I've always been an angry kid at that time with my parents because I didn't know the whole sacrifice. Now having a kid. I know how it feels to have a parent. I know how it feels to be a parent. So I did. I, rem I remember uh, thinking about like uh, you left. I, my mom left for 15 years, but I didn't appreciate the whole 15 years we were together and how grateful I am to be to be with her and uh, that she's my mom. And uh, even my dad, his sacrifices for me uh, just to 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 be alive <laughs> to, to survive this whole thing. Yeah, it, it's it. It changed my life in a good way, and th that I didn't expect. And um, it, it, yeah, the whole, like I said, like the whole meaning of love became different for me. It, it got deeper. It made me more vulnerable, and uh, it made me. It, it changed my mindset about the future, about yeah, about uh, work, and uh, yeah, I, I, I remember like. I, wow, I'm actually excited to work every time now because I'm supporting something, I, I, some someone. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's it, it's a it's a good feeling being a father. Are you a father? Uh, no, I'm single forever. I just take care of my nieces and nephews. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's gonna be different if you are. <laughs> I know, maybe it will. Maybe it will. But um, but so do you feel like it's one of those things where like, uh, you know how like parents will say. Just watch when you have your own child. Watch yes. <laughs> Do you see that now? It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've been giving them pain when, when they were there. Like, now you know how it feels, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so let's go and wrap it up and just go and tell everybody. Just look at the camera and tell everybody where to find you on social media. And then also invite everybody to watch the film on, on, on the various platforms, uh, TBA and all that good stuff. Uh, hi everyone, it's JC Santos, and yeah, you can check me out at j.c.santos in Instagram and Kaloy JC Santos in Twitter. And for more information about here and there, uh, check TBA Studios Facebook page at Twitter and uh, Instagram to get to know more about how to get tickets 
for Dito at Doon or, or here and there. there uh, so yeah, please watch. Let's support Filipino films. Let's support here and there. there it's directed by JP Habak. I'm going to be acting with Janine Gutierrez, with Victor Anastasio, Yesh Burse, and with, with the special participation of Lot Lot de Leon. So it's going to be our treat for you. It's going to be our good story, our love letter for the 2020, uh, all for you. Let's support, support the po natin ng pelikulang Pilipino. Check the social media accounts. Hello. Yon. Hello. Uy, balita. 